Throughout the Vietnam War, the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong forces relied on a wide assortment of weapons to counter the American and South Vietnamese forces. These weapons, frequently supplied by allies such as the Soviet Union and China, were singled out for their effectiveness, longevity, and adaptability to the conflict's challenging conditions. Each item in the Vietnamese arsenal had a crucial role in guerrilla tactics and conventional military missions. Today, we will explore some of the most notable weapons used by the Vietnamese combatants, whose qualities, weaknesses, and curiosities shaped the war's events. AK-47 Assault Rifle – The Backbone of the Vietnamese Army Designed by Soviet engineer Mikhail Kalishnikov, the AK-47 became the most iconic infantry weapon used extensively by the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. Released in 1947, the AK-47 is known for its durability, simplicity, and dependability, traits that made it ideal for the unforgiving conditions found in the Vietnamese jungles and mountainous terrain. Featuring a rate of fire of approximately 600 rounds per minute and a caliber of 7.62 millimeters, the AK-47 provided considerable firepower, vital for the guerrilla tactics employed by the Vietnamese. The AK-47's greatest asset was its robustness. It could operate effectively in extreme conditions, such as mud, sand, and water, all without jeopardizing its performance. Its straightforward nature allowed for easy maintenance and servicing in the field, a crucial factor in Vietnamese forces who often worked far from their supply bases. Additionally, the AK-47's user-friendly design allowed soldiers with minimal training to quickly learn how to effectively handle the weapon, making it a perfect choice for the Viet Cong militia. But the weapon's weight, approximately 4.3 kilograms loaded, could be a burden on long marches or patrols. One interesting fact about the AK-47 is that its presence in Vietnam was not only limited to Vietnamese forces. American soldiers often wanted to pick up and use AK-47s for their superior reliability compared to some of the American weapons, such as the M16 in the initial stages of the conflict. This weapon not only epitomized the Vietnamese resistance, but also stands as one of the most influential and enduring weapon designs in modern military history. One of the most powerful and feared anti-tank weapons used by the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong during the war, the RPG-7 was a rocket-propelled grenade launcher developed by the Soviet Union. First deployed in the late 1950s, it rapidly made a name for itself due to its ability to devastate armored vehicles, bunkers, and other fortifications. Its effective range of around 200 meters against moving targets and up to 500 meters against fixed ones, the RPG-7 provided Vietnamese fighters with a powerful tool to stand up to the U.S. forces' technological supremacy. One of the RPG-7's key qualities is its simplicity and practicality. The launcher is light, approximately 7 kilograms with a loaded rocket, allowing it to be portable and ideal for guerrilla warfare. Its robust design provides for reliable operation in different climatic conditions and terrains, from humid jungles to urban areas. The RPG-7 is also extremely versatile and can fire a wide range of grenades, including anti-tank and anti-personnel shells, broadening its battlefield appeal. Nevertheless, for all its striking qualities, the RPG-7 does have a number of weaknesses. The launcher's accuracy largely depends on the skill of the operator and environmental conditions, as the rocket is prone to misalignments caused by wind or dense vegetation. The RPG-7's firing also produces a considerable backblast, which may give away the operator's position and threaten any person or object behind the weapon. The RPG-7 turned into a resistance icon and a weapon of choice for many insurgent forces around the world, owing to its proven efficiency and the ease with which it can be acquired and used. The RPG-7's stint in Vietnam was the start of its legacy as one of the world's most recognized and widely used anti-tank weapons. MAP-49 Submachine Gun It was originally developed by France in the late 1940s and became a weapon widely used by North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops during the Vietnam War. Once the French withdrew from Vietnam, a large number of these weapons became available and were seized by the Vietnamese. 
The Mop 49's tight design and robustness made it an ideal choice for guerrilla warfare, providing effective firepower in close combat. One of the Mop 49's chief qualities is its durability and simplicity of use. The weapon employs 9mm ammunition and has a rate of fire of around 600 rounds per minute, allowing it to fire quickly and efficiently in heavy combat situations. Its bottom-mounted 32-round magazine could be folded for easy transportation, rendering the Mot 49 particularly handheld and handy for ambushes and covert attacks. The weapon's straightforward build also made it easy to maintain and repair in the field, a significant advantage for guerrilla forces operating in harsh conditions. The Mot 49 was not without its constraints, however. Its effective range was relatively short, limited to around 100 to 200 meters making it less effective in combat at medium and long distances. The Mod 49's accuracy was also greatly reduced during prolonged automatic firing due to the recoil and barrel elevation. The Mod 49's deployed by the Vietnamese were often modified locally, including adaptations to increase magazine capacity or change the rate of fire. These improvised modifications reflect the inventiveness and adaptability of Vietnamese fighters, who maximized the effectiveness of their available equipment to counter the U.S.'s technologically superior forces. Developed by the Soviet Union in the late 1940s, the RPD light machine gun was a vital part of the arsenal of the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong forces during the Vietnam War. Built to provide continuous fire support at squad level, the RPD fired 7.62 by 39mm rounds, the same as the AK-47 and SKS rifles, making ammo logistics easier on the battlefield. With a firing rate of approximately 650 rounds per minute, the RPD struck an effective balance between firepower and control during continuous firing. The weapon is comparatively light for a machine gun, weighing around 7 kilograms, making it easy for a single soldier to carry and handle. Its 100-round belt-fed system meant it could fire long bursts without frequent reloading, offering crucial sustained fire support in heavy combat. The RPD's simple and durable build also made it highly reliable in harsh conditions, from the jungle's humidity to the dusty battlegrounds. There were some limitations to the RPD, though. The reloading belt could be time-consuming and tricky mid-combat, potentially leaving the operator exposed to enemy fire. Additionally, it could overheat during prolonged firing, prompting the carrier to take breaks to avoid damaging the barrel. The weapon was so reliable and successful that, as with the AK-47, many American units picked up and used RPDs against Vietnamese forces. This proved not only the RPD's effectiveness, but also the troops' adaptability in taking advantage of the best weapons available, regardless of their origin. During the Vietnam War, North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong forces widely used the Type 53 carbine, a Chinese derivative of the Soviet Mosin Nagant M44 rifle. Released in the 1950s, it was designed to be a reliable and sturdy infantry weapon suitable for arduous combat conditions. Using 7.62 by 54 mm ammunition, the rifle was renowned for its range and penetrating power, making it effective both in mid-range combat and in demanding situations where heavy cover had to be pierced. The Type 53's main quality was its durability. Modeled on the successful Mosin Nagant design, the rifle could withstand extreme conditions, from the damp and mud of the Vietnamese jungles to the daily wear and tear of combat. Its folding bayonet, a distinctive feature of the Type 53, brought versatility to the weapon, allowing it to be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The mechanical simplicity made it easy to maintain and repair in the field, a crucial advantage for guerrilla forces. The rifle's size and weight, around 4 kilograms, could be a challenge on long patrols and in difficult terrain. The five-shot magazine's manual loading forced a limited rate of fire, not ideal in heavy combat. While technically outclassed by more modern weapons, the carbine was widely used due to its availability and reliability. China supplied many of these weapons to North Vietnam, revealing the complex network of international support that bolstered the Vietnamese war effort. The Chinese-made Type 67 hand grenade was extensively used by the Viet Cong during the war. This fragmentation grenade was well known for its simplicity and effectiveness, 
making it one of the main explosive devices used in guerrilla tactics. At about 500 grams, the Type 67 was relatively light and easy to carry, allowing guerrillas to transport several units during missions. When thrown, the grenade detonated after a brief delay, spraying lethal metal fragments over a 15-meter radius, making it effective for sweeping areas densely occupied by enemy troops or for creating ambushes. The Type 67 was largely manufactured locally, with readily available materials, making it possible to mass-produce it to meet the Viet Cong needs. This local manufacturing ability stressed the ingenuity and adaptability of the Vietnamese guerrillas in using limited resources to develop effective weaponry against the American forces. Developed in the Soviet Union and introduced as the standard pistol of the Warsaw Pact Armed Forces in the 1950s, the Makarov PM pistol was extensively employed by the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong during the war. With its compact and robust frame, the Makarov PM used 9x18mm ammo, offering an effective balance between size, weight, and firepower. Its practicality and reliability made it a popular choice among officers and soldiers for self-defense. Featuring a design based on the German Walther PP pistol, the Makarov PM is known for its simple build, allowing for easy disassembly and in-field cleaning. The weapon is lightweight, coming in at around 730 grams, making it easy to carry and handle. Additionally, the Makarov PM has an 8-shot magazine, enough for self-defense situations and close-range combat. Its reliability in harsh conditions, from the humidity of the jungles to the battlefield dirt, was a significant advantage for the Vietnamese fighters. Also known as the SVD, the Dragunov sniper rifle was originally developed in the Soviet Union and went on to become one of the most iconic precision rifles used by the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong during the war. Introduced in 1963, the Dragunov was conceived to deliver long-range accuracy with a 762 by 54 mm caliber, allowing Vietnamese snipers to hit targets with pinpoint accuracy at distances of up to 800 meters. One of the Dragunov's main assets is the combination of precision and durability. The rifle was built to be strong and reliable in harsh conditions, retaining accuracy even in hostile environments such as the Vietnamese jungles. Equipped with a 4X PSO-1 telescopic sight, the Dragunov had an excellent long-distance target acquisition capability. The semi-automatic design also allowed for rapid successive firing, a significant advantage over bolt-action precision rifles. The Dragunov also had its limitations, of course. While it was highly effective in long-range combat, its accuracy dropped at extreme ranges compared to specialized bolt-action precision rifles. Its durability, reliability, and ability to deliver precision support at long range made the Dragunov a priceless asset for Vietnamese snipers, significantly helping their ambush and defense ops. Were you a Viet Cong fighter deep in the jungle poised to ambush a U.S. patrol? Which of these weapons would you like to have at your disposal? Share your opinion with us in the comments and see you in the next video.